Hi there, good evening, and welcome to the Jimbo Hannon Show from Westwood One Radio. We're at one 560 jimbo one 560 And on the web, you'll find us at jimbotalk.net. Well, you go and try and tell your story, and uh, you discover that, uh, son of a gun, somebody put gasoline in the water there, and you <laughs> tossed it on the fire, and <laughs> poof! Uh, our guest tonight wanted to tell the story. Of being a former speechwriter to the president. Speechless is the name of the book. Oh, that guy, you're already saying. Tales of a White House Survivor, Matt Latimer is our guest. Is it pronounced Latimer? That's what I thought. I wanted to be sure. All right. So, uh, for openers, how did you get to be a White House speechwriter? Then we'll get uh, and dish some dirt here. Sure. Um, my book is actually sort of my story about that. I, I came from a union family in Michigan, a, a the conservative and a liberal family, sort of the black sheep, if you will. Mm-hmm. Moved on to Capitol Hill, and after I went to law school, I went to Capitol Hill and uh, different senators and members of Congress, and then to the Pentagon where I worked for Secretary Rumsfeld, and mm-hmm. from there I went to the White House and got to work for President Bush. And, uh, well, we'll get into all the details of that in uh, just a moment. Suffice it to say that along the way, I guess we could say that uh, maybe uh, your illusions were shattered a bit. <laughs> would that be safe to say? Yeah, in some ways, you know. Um, I was a, an idealistic political junkie. You know, when I was a kid, I used to, you know, color code the maps blue and red every election year. And mm-hmm. I could tell you how many electoral votes Jimmy Carter and Ronald Reagan won in 1980. And, and how old were you when that, that election was held? Oh, gosh, you know, eight or nine, ten. Yeah, I was going to say, okay, so uh, um, young guy, but go ahead. Yeah, and um, but I could tell you all that stuff. You know, kids are going to baseball games and following all that stuff. I was, you know... You know, watching tapes of old speeches and listening to conventions. I taped all the speeches at every Republican and Democratic convention. And so I followed that forever. And, you know, I, I thought I'd go to Washington. And at first I was a Democrat. And as I got older, I became more conservative. And I thought I'd, I'd follow the Reagan Revolution and start it all over again. And it didn't quite turn out that way. Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, let's talk a bit about your experiences with uh, Donald Rumsfeld, uh-huh. uh, certainly, uh, to say the least, an interesting person, uh, variously described uh, as a, a genius and a, a, a maniacal dictator, <laughs> uh, a control freak. My guess would be that of all the, the statements about the man, control freak would come pretty close. <laughs> well, he definitely liked to have his hands on things, especially from yeah. a speechwriter's perspective. You know, um, that's how I knew him, and he would edit speeches uh to excess sometimes, but he liked to have his hands on them, and he would edit speeches over and over again until he was quite happy with them. Yeah, Uh, which really raises, I guess, another question I might as well bring up here. Uh, The role of speechwriter is, after all, to put somebody else's words in their own mouth. Right. How do you go about, I mean, it's easy enough, I suppose, for any reasonably literate individual to uh, be told, okay, uh, we need 12 minutes on uh, the trade deficit, okay? I mean, if, if you put the time and the work into it, you can come up with something right. serviceable. You, you might have <clears throat> lacked maybe a gift of uh, of, of the, the poignant punchline and the like, but you can knock out a speech. But when you are told to do that in the voice of someone else, how do you study that other person's voice? Do you read old speeches, watch news conferences, hang around them? I mean, how do you get a handle for that person? Yeah, you, you do have to do all those things, um, Fortunately for me, you know, I worked for senator, senators as well as speechwriters, and I didn't see senators as often as Rumsfeld and Bush. I mean, they were very well-known people, so I'd, I'd seen tapes and, of their speeches, and I'd watched them on TV years before I started working for them. But, you know, you read their own speeches, and you talk to them, and you, you try to hang around and be in the back of the room and hear what they're thinking and what they're hearing from other people. And you, I try to write a speech listening to them talk as I'm writing it. And mm-hmm. You can be a wonderful writer and be a, and not be a very good speechwriter because it's very hard for some people to get out of their own voice and do someone else's voice. So it's just sort of a, a technique to that, and I don't know how I learned it, but I, I think I was pretty good at that. The president of the United States is known for giving out nicknames. Yes. What was yours? <laughs> I don't think I had a nickname at the time, <laughs> but I, I might have one now. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you really, you you you, uh, you didn't at the time. No, it, you know it's it's not true that you know. I, like I saw that movie W or President Bush. You know, everybody's yeah. got a nickname, and he's constantly doing that. Yeah. Constantly, I didn't see him do that all the time. But we did have one speechwriter in the uh, group who did get a nickname that I saw, and his name was Jonathan Horn. A very wonderfully nice, warm, great person. And the president started calling him Horny. Mm-hmm. And I found that sort of an uncomfortable nickname to hear horny a lot, you know, from the president saying, you know, horny, let me explain how this speech works. It's just a sort of an, an odd thing to hear. But that's the only nickname that I know of for the speechwriters. Yeah. Uh, in, a, in a speech, uh, in a book, I should say, about uh, being a speechwriter at the White House and other places of power, one would not expect to, to hear about uh, Mickey Mouseketeer ears, <laughs> but there we do, right up front at the very beginning. Pray tell, work that into this context. Well, I was um, one of the people writing the re- remarks for the president after the economic catastrophe hit the, our country about a year ago today. As the very, fact. very end of the Bush presidency. That's, yeah, that's correct. And at one of the one of the things we had to do as speechwriters is kind of figure out what the heck is going on. So we were told to go and meet with the president's economic advisors. And we went to meet with one of them in his office in the West Wing, and he sketched out this dire scenario for the economy, and um, uh, basically we're going to have to do some nationalization of the banks, and um, the best-case scenario, this is the best-case scenario for the economy, he said, was a long, deep, painful recession. And, and that's the best-case scenario. And while he was talking about this horrible scenario, this terrible economy we were facing, all these awful choices, he took a Mickey Mouse cap, like you see at Disney World, yeah. and he put it on his head, and without a word, and continued talking. And the two speechwriters, my friend Chris and I were the speechwriters, <laughs> looked at each other, baffled. We looked at him. He never said a word. We didn't ask him what he was doing. He just kept it on his head and continued talking. And I never forgot that because I just thought it was a, a fitting metaphor for those days. Yes. Uh, on the other hand, having gotten this far, is there a punchline? And I put it on my head because I'm going to a costume party tonight, or I just wanted to see how you react to stressful situations. There are any number. We can make it multiple choice, I guess. But do we, in fact, know why to this day? I, to this day, I do not know why he did it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not the uh, the only place where we will we will pause for a laugh uh, within uh, the pages of the book Speechless Tales of a White House Survivor published by Crown written by Matt Latimer, former speechwriter to the president to uh, uh, Donald Rumsfeld, the then defense secretary and a number of uh, the minions on Capitol Hill. <laughs> uh by the way, uh, there have been those who have noted that uh, in general uh, Mr. Rumsfeld uh, doesn't get the working over that others do and some have even wondered if you are still in his employ. <laughs> Well, I've heard that myself. I'm not actually... Well, here's your chance to answer it. Absolutely. Actually, um, there are a lot of people in the book who I think come out pretty well. Senator John Kyle, who I worked for, I, I, I liked from him a Arizona. lot. From Arizona. From Arizona. I respected right. him a lot. I, I worked for a congressman from Michigan who was kind of an eccentric, but in the I still found him a very endearing, and he was a very principled person that from would Michigan. Be... Nick Smith, congressman from Michigan. Okay. Right. Um, I, I had nice things to say about President Bush, as a matter of fact, and all the speechers I worked with, with a few exceptions, I should say. Um, mm-hmm. But Secretary Rumsfeld, I'm not in his employ now, but I, I was asked, um, along with some other people, to help him put his memoirs together. And I was, as I talk about in the book, I was with him during three of his most interesting years, shall we say, at the Pentagon, his last three years. So it was really kind of a natural fit. So are you helping him with this? I, 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 I have been helping him. I've sort of helped put it together with other people. But anybody, as I've said many times, anybody knows Donna Rumso knows that Donna Rumso does his own memoir. Fair enough. one uh, 560 jimbo is our number, one 560 Here's your chance to get some of the really inside skinny here. There's all kinds of stuff that comes up in here. There are things that, that frankly, uh, not only answer questions that you've had, but there are things in the book Speechless that answer questions you wouldn't have thought to ask. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm really serious. Serious about that. This is uh, this is an amazing document here, and I can't wait for the miniseries myself. <laughs> Matt Latimer is our guest on the Jim Bohannon Show.